Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to correctly format your ebook for Amazon's KDP for Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing Platform using nothing but our beloved Microsoft Word which probably most of you know how to use very well or at least have some experience. So this is going to be kind of a quick and simple guide probably for the beginner. Uh, we're going to be covering some basic concepts. Uh, this is probably going to be most useful for the person who has not done this before. Or perhaps if you do have some experience with Amazon KDP, with, with the publishing process, this might be useful to just run through to see where you can kind of add things to your formatting processes. Or perhaps just get a deep, slightly deeper understanding of how these things work. So the first basic idea, the basic concept that I want to cover is that what you see in Microsoft Word does not equal what you see on the Kindle. So in Microsoft Word you see an A4 page but this A4 page is not, does not get translated one to one on the Kindle file, on the Kindle format. The reason being is that the Kindle uh, e-readers are, there There are many Kindle e-readers. There's the Kindle Paperwhite, the Kindle Fire, there may be uh, the Kindle uh, app for reading on your smartphone, your iPad. Um, there may be, you. some people may be even reading uh, on their, in the web app in their, on their desktop or their laptop. So yeah, there's many different versions of how your book will be consumed through the e-readers. Consequently, there are some elements that are specific to to separate pages of Word, like headers, footers, borders, that sort of stuff. It's all specific to, to the one uh, A4 page. And these will not translate. When you convert your page, these will not translate to, to Kindle. So you've got to omit these. Um, now, actually, I noticed that Amazon has improved their uh, conversion process. They actually, as in the past, this stuff may have been kind of uh, distorted, like jumbled, or perhaps like the header stuff was just out of place. The, the, uh, the numbering in the footer was just appearing randomly, just uh, having random numbers appear throughout your, your Kindle book. It's, it's highly, highly recommended and actually necessary that you omit these. Even though now they, they Amazon has kind of put in place some sort of processes to kind of protect the end outcome, the end book from having these distortions. It's still, you, you should not uh, include these, useful to know. Next, do not format using the enter key. If you need to create some sort of space, some uh, perhaps you want part of your file to be in another page, you might be inclined to just press the enter, enter key repeatedly. But the thing is, whilst in Word that may be fine, it may it may it might create the desired effect. But on Kindle, these spaces will actually be converted to just blank space. So, and if you remember that the pages are not one to one, there might you might end up with just a blank space in the middle of a page, beginning of a page, and that's not really something you want. So instead, what you got to do is you got to use page breaks, the page breaks feature, which I'll get into uh, later in this video. And next, do not use any fancy fonts. There, there's no uh, use in doing that because if you use some sort of rare fonts, um, they, they will not be converted to the, the Kindle file. I'm pretty sure they won't uh, cause any damage. They won't, <laughs> they won't create any anything that's distorted or looking bad, but just there's you, you got to know that there's no use in spending time t trying to find the right you know uh, the right font if it's I mean if it's an unusual font and a very un uh, a font that is, is not uh, popular on the flip side formatting elements that you should use are bold fonts italic fonts uh, underlines in the formatting if if this applies to your book, use tables, uh, images that are centered and 
uh, very preferably that they are high DPI with a high resolution, high rate of dots per inch, high number in, in that. Use, as I mentioned previously, use page breaks. And also I also recommend that you have a, an interactive table of contents uh, in the beginning of your book especially for nonfiction books because for nonfiction books readers might be inclined to just hop around different sections of your book uh, from one to the other uh, not necessarily in a linear linear fashion whereas for fiction books I think most of the time people kind of don't tend to skip around so much but it still might be useful even for, for a fiction book to have a clickable table of contents. Both of which of these we are uh, gonna get into more uh, soon. So really quickly I wanted to just run through the recommended front mat matter structure. Uh, it looks something like this. You have the title page after which you have the copyright page uh, with, with your disclaimer and your legal information. Then you, you would have your table of contents, uh, a dedication, preface, prologue, something like this. And also remember that you do not need to add your book cover to the book file, to your Word file, because that will be added automatically. Uh, the, the platform would do, do that for you during the conversion process. So this, this is just not needed. If you want to learn more about this, the, the specifics, the KDP has uh, a nice page on this, which I will probably link, which I will link to below. You can check it out, um, learn more about all this stuff. Page breaks. Uh, so I want to get into this a little bit deeper. Every page break that you insert puts the content on a new page, even in every in every version of, of Kindle e-reader, in every version of, doesn't matter where it's being read, it's, it puts the content of your book on a new page. So these, I, I highly advise that you really start using these a lot, wherever it's needed, wherever you want your content to be a new, on a new page, you use a page break. Do not just hit the enter key. I think this is one of the typical kind of beginner mistakes with this. Um, so this, this might be a good, a good thing to, a very simple thing to do that you can just quite probably dramatically improve your, the quality of, of your formatting if, if you're using Word currently. Also, I highly recommend that you use non-print character viewing, uh, which uh, the little symbol that you got to click looks something like this. This will just allow you to kind of get a better gauge get a better look of your file where you can kind of see basically where the spaces are this each space each type of space either if it's like a indentation if it's uh, spaces after after between uh, paragraphs whatever it is every space has some sort of character some sort of denotation so you can have a look at these and see where there's something that is not necessary and it allows you to kind of clean your file up so definitely recommend that you use this yeah this is kind of what it what it would look like this is what you would see in a word file next creating a clickable table of contents so as i mentioned before recommended highly recommended for Nonfiction books, especially going to recommend it for nonfiction books. To do this, you would use Word Styles feature, the Styles feature of Word. Um, you would set up a certain type of formatting for heading one, heading two, which would be your subheading, and then you would just go ahead and select every place. If you haven't, or this is if you haven't already done this, uh, you would select every heading and mark it as. Uh, heading one or every subheading you would mark as heading two go throughout your whole document and do this um, if you haven't already actually I recommend that going forward you use this you use this feature for for everything that you do because it just makes formatting so much more easy the the styles feature but back to the TOC so once you've all of your headings you've uh, marked down as 
uh, headings uh, through the styles, sort of the styles feature. Then what you would do, you would go to insert and index and tables, and then go to the table of contents tab. That's basically it. It might look slightly differently for you if you have a different uh, version of uh, Word, but that's the basic, uh, basic, basic process. So yeah, that's it. That's the basic um, gist of what you need to know about uh, formatting your ebook for Kindle using Microsoft Word. I think with Microsoft Word, you can definitely get a file that is good enough. It's kind of the formatting will be kind of minimalist. It will be you won't have any kind of special elements really. Not not too many at least. Um, but I think it can definitely get the job done, get it done well. But if you if you're looking for something more advanced, if you're looking to if you're looking to take care of all the details of the formatting, if you want to uh, add more details, if you want it to be if you wanted to have more details and you want to have more control of how it is displayed in the Kindle files in the Kindle e-readers, um, then you got to use some sort of software which allows you to edit the Mobi file. So yeah, I hope this video was useful for you. I hope you learned a lot from it and you can add things to your uh, publishing process. As always, feel free to grab our free report, The Seven Pillars to Self-Publishing Best-Selling Books. Um, if you're a beginner, you will gain a lot of value from it. There's a lot of good info packed in it. And even if you're not a beginner, if you're more seasoned in this industry of, in this area of self-publishing, you will, I'm confident that you still will gain value from it. And also feel free to check out our other videos where we've been putting out uh, free content, uh, free, free value for you guys. Definitely feel free to hop around and check that, that stuff out. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in another video or in some other form on the interwebs.